Hello there, my name is Monica Burns and welcome to today's episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast. It is 2024 and whether you're joining for the first time, 100th time or for the 200th time, I am so glad you're here. I have lots of exciting things in store for you this year. Each episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast is designed to give you ideas you can try yourself, share with a colleague or bookmark for later in the school year. Get ready for stories from my time in the classroom, the work I do now with schools and districts, and my travels to different ed tech events, as well as practical ideas and inspiring stories from new guests each month. If we mention something you'd like to check out, you'll find the link to it in the show notes. So don't forget to head to my website, classtechtips.com slash podcast for all of the show notes and resources from today's episode. This episode is sponsored by my new free webinar, 24 Tips for 2024, Simple Ways to Save Time Using ChatGPT. I'll share tips for educators who are new to using chatbots and ideas you can spin and make your own if you're already diving into the world of chatbots. We'll look at ChatGPT, of course, alongside alternatives like Claude and Bard 2. Join us for the free webinar live on January 4th Or if you miss it live, catch the limited replay during the month of January. Either way, head to classtechtips.com slash 2024 for more details. This week's episode is all about study strategies for students and for anyone who puts themselves in the category of lifelong learners. So today we're going to look at some of my go-to tips for students using technology both inside and outside of the classroom, things that you could introduce in the middle of a lesson or within a unit of study. And even if you don't teach study tips or study strategies to students in isolation, you can absolutely incorporate them into a wide range of content area instruction. And today we'll bounce around with ideas that might feel a bit more secondary, a bit more elementary, definitely things that you could tailor to a variety of learning environments. Now, I haven't shared this largely or widely just yet, but later this spring, I have a second edition of my book, Ed Tech Essentials, that will be released. I am super excited for this new edition. As I'm recording this for you in January, I've just submitted uh, some of the final pieces. I saw the new book cover design. So this is all really happening. So very excited. And I mention it because one of the chapters focuses on the skill of navigate and how to help students learn how to navigate and make the most of digital spaces. And this goes beyond content area instruction, of course, right? We're helping students prepare for a lifetime of learning. And in today's episode, I've got study tips for students for you and for lifelong learners using tech that you can, of course, customize. I've got a few specific tech tools and examples, but you might have another favorite. So ones that you can customize for your group. So let's jump into the list of study strategies. I've got a little under a dozen favorites for you. And of course, the show notes will take you out to links to the extra resources I mentioned and other things you'll want to explore. First up is to set up a study schedule. I'm going to say that again for you. Study schedule with digital calendars. Now, as I record this, I've got a paper calendar on my desk. I've got my digital calendar up not far right in one of my other tabs here too. And of course, always going strong on my phone and encouraging students to use digital calendars like Google Calendar to organize their study schedules is a great way to introduce a lifelong learning skill. You can show them how to use digital calendar features like recurring meetings to set up study sessions for just themselves or for small groups. And you can even introduce how to invite others and set event reminders too. Now my calendar, my digital calendar of choice is Google Calendar. And I do have a post on the blog called seven Google Calendar tips for teachers that I'll link out to. And you could share some of those strategies with students. But of 
course, if you are in an Outlook or Microsoft environment or you use another tool, most have similar features. So that first strategy is to set up a study schedule with digital calendars. And we could talk about calendars all day, color coding, other things, but that recurring meetings, I think is a great place to start. Next up are interactive study sessions using educational apps. And you can introduce students to an app that lets them create their own digital flashcards and quizzes, giving them some ownership of their learning. Quizlet's an example of a tool that you can do that with. And these tools can make studying interactive for students, whether they add images or they interact with study materials that someone else has created. It can help them identify areas where they want to put some more time or practice into also. So it's great to pair with any reflections that you're doing. There's an AI tool that's come on the scene to help out with this called Paper Clips that I've been exploring. I'll link out to that too. It's friendly for Chrome users, but of course, flashcards have come a long way <laughs> since me with a Sharpie marker in my hand and index cards on my desk as a student. And there's lots of digital connections that can really use the same baseline or foundational idea of practicing, reviewing, and reflecting on what you need to spend some more time on. Number three is to introduce the Pomodoro method. And this is something that I use in my practice sporadically. I won't say it's an everyday thing that I do, but it can absolutely help students and yourself even stay focused when they are studying or reviewing materials. This is something, of course, that you could do completely offline, but there is a great website with the Pomodoro timer uh, that can help you out. So essentially, the Pomodoro method breaks down your work into intervals. It's traditionally 25 minutes in length. You could play with that or work up to that if you're building stamina with your students. And there are short breaks in the middle. So I sometimes do something similar with the app Brain FM. It's like a tool where you can say, I want the timer to be in like deep work or deep focus for 20 or 30 minutes. And so when I put that on, I know I'm not going to look at my phone, right? I'm not going to look at Instagram. And I'm sure that your students, particularly at the secondary level, right, have similar distractions that we all do around us. So this is a great way to stay focused. Having that Pomodoro timer up on another browser can keep them honest during a study session. Next is to use note-taking apps. And you can model or demonstrate how to use note-taking apps, particularly if you choose one that all of your students have access to. It's in your ecosystem like Google Keep or Evernote or Microsoft OneNote. These can help students organize their notes by subject, date, project, Evernote lets you add tags to your notes too, and there's often highlighting and annotating text features. Now, some of these can be a little overwhelming, right? There's a lot of features, so you might decide that you're introducing it super simple, and then students can pick and choose what other things they want to add into their note-taking routine. So, so far, we've got those note-taking apps, the Pomodoro method, the study sessions with a quizzing app, and then setting up your schedule with digital calendars. Next up is collaborative study groups. And speaking of collaboration, right, you might want to demonstrate demonstrate how to use tools that foster collaboration. So not just the note-taking apps where maybe you can introduce a collaborative aspect, but even working with other students or creating study groups, right? All things we've kind of circled around today. This is something you might want to bring in really thoughtfully into a study strategy you introduce to students. Now, just like navigate, collaborate is another essential for my book, EdTech Essentials. And collaboration in digital spaces can really help help kids study, ask questions, bounce ideas off each other with their classmates or peers. And there's cloud-based collaboration tools like Google Docs or Teams, but you might find that students are sitting side by side and they have a digital resource up for them to review together. 
If your students are diving into some complex subjects this year with lots of moving parts or connected ideas, you might want to introduce mind mapping to them. Now, I love using word clouds to represent ideas. I often do that with the tool Mentimeter if you're joining me for a live event or webinar. And if you're a member of my Easy EdTech Club, you might remember the mind mapping masterclass that we did about this topic. But there's oodles of digital tools you can choose from. I did a post in partnership on the blog with Cami earlier this year, which is a great alternative to Jamboard. Lucidchart is another that can help students visualize and connect different ideas. And this could be especially useful when studying some complex topics or complex subject material that really involves a lot of pieces that are interrelated. So mind mapping, another great study strategy for students and for lifelong learners. Now, I mentioned reflection earlier, particularly if you're using digital flashcards to reflect and then say, all right, this is something I need extra work on. You might have a reflection process that you introduce as a study strategy for a group. And you can do this with students in a digital journaling space. Book Creator, another favorite. I've done a lot of work with their team. That's something that students could use as a journaling tool. They might jump into Google Docs or make an interactive journal with Google Slides. And when kids are keeping a digital journal, they can reflect on their study habits, what's working, what isn't working, and even make some goals about how they can improve their approach to studying materials. Next up on our list relates to language learning. Now, Duolingo is a popular consumer tool, but if you haven't checked it out, Duolingo for Schools is free. I did a post in partnership with them last year, the year before, and it was very much news to me that the school's version is a free option that you could use or share with students. So specifically, if your kids are learning a new language, they might use one of the Duolingo for Schools options for learning a language or reinforcing material they're learning throughout the school day. Now, for this next one, I I kind of alluded to it already with the Pomodoro method, but I'm going to keep it as its own separate study tip for you, which is to use music or playlists to help focus. So I am not a fan of noise canceling headphones. They make me dizzy. I thought it was just me. And then I did some Googling about how noise canceling headphones do not agree with everyone. And I fall definitely fall into that category. I've given it a bunch of tries and it just makes me a little nauseous. And so if you feel that way, feel your feelings also, uh, you're not alone. I know they're great and people love them. And I am a frequent flyer of flying to different professional development stuff and traveling to visit family, right? But you will not find me with noise canceling headphones on an airplane. That being said, I do love to use music to stay focused. So it might not mean that there's no other noise in my back in the background for me, but I do love music. And so Brain FM, that one I mentioned earlier, that's a... Uh, app that's great for focused playing music. So they have focus playlists that you can pick and choose from, but you'll also find it on Spotify or YouTube also. So if you don't have to download Brain FM, if it's not for you, right, you might find another place you're already inhabiting. I'm a big Spotify person that there is a playlist you might want to use with students or maybe even on your own, right, to help minimize distractions. Now, if you are looking to incorporate some multimedia into the study strategies you recommend and you notice your students are really coming back to the text, right? Maybe it's a textbook, maybe it's a lot of reading materials. Well, you might want to suggest a different medium to help them study. And so for this one, this next strategy is to help students learn from podcasts, and videos. And if they use media like a podcast or video, they can listen, they can watch. And there's a lot of places they can go to find study style material or just to learn something new that they're interested in. Khan Academy, TED Ed are two examples. And you might feel, right, especially for those two, which are very visual, that students will get the most out of watching and listening, but even if they're just listening, right, that could help reinforce some big ideas. So definitely something that you might want to consider as you are thinking about your options for study strategies you might introduce to your group. 
So let's do a recap of this list, right? We have setting up a study schedule with digital calendars. I'll link out to those extra Google calendar tips for you using interactive study sessions with apps that help kids quiz, trying out the Pomodoro method or that 25 minutes on, and then take a couple minutes for a break using note-taking apps, collaborating with study groups, using mind mapping tools to show connections in complex subjects or study materials, reflecting in a digital journal, maybe something like Book Creator, using a language learning app, maybe that's the Duolingo for schools or another favorite, using a playlist to stay focused, and tuning in to podcasts and videos for some extra information and lifelong learning. So I hope that these ideas gave you a place to get started or a refresh on something that maybe worked in the past. Maybe you heard of the Pomodoro method and just haven't used it in forever. (laughs) And now you want to introduce it to your students. So if you have got a favorite one, maybe one I mentioned, maybe something totally different, or maybe you just want to say, Monica, I am in the no noise canceling headphones club, (laughs) whatever you want to share with me. I would love to hear it. You can find me on Instagram. You can send me a message. It's at class tech tips. If you get my weekly newsletter, you can always reply. I read every email that I get from people who reply to the newsletter. And if you don't get the newsletter and you want it, you can just go to classtechtips.com slash newsletter and put your name on the list. So let's make this ed tech easy with a couple key points from the episode. Explore interactive skill building apps. Introduce digital tools and strategies that enhance focus. Get organized with digital note-taking and calendars. Remember, you can find the show notes and the full list of resources from this episode by going to classtechtips.com slash podcast and finding today's episode. It's number 250. Can you believe it? 250 episodes already. This episode is sponsored by my new free webinar, 24 Tips for 2024, Simple Ways to Save Time Using ChatGPT. I'll share tips for educators who are new to using chatbots and ideas you can spin and make your own if you're already diving into the world of chatbots. We'll look at ChatGPT, of course, alongside alternatives like Claude and Bard 2. Join us for the free webinar live on January 4th, or if you miss it live, catch the limited replay during the month of January. Either way, head to classtechtips.com slash 2024 for more details. This March, we'll celebrate five years of the Easy EdTech podcast. To help celebrate, I'm hoping you can do us a favor. Leave a rating or review for the podcast wherever you're listening today. Spotify will let you tap on the stars and Apple Podcasts will let you tap on the stars too and leave a one or two sentence review. A big thank you in advance for helping us get ready to celebrate this March. 